Yeah, that's a million dollar question. My friend Martin Krieger, once we were organizing a panel, some kind of conference, so he came up with this kind of name, populism, a friend or foe of democracy. And that is, I think all of us are thinking now, whether this kind of populist movement is something threatening or is it some kind of revival of democracy. I think we can approach this problem on, from two sides. Basic theories of populism uh, underlined agency of politicians. There's, we could call them this agency-driven theories. And they perceived populists as this, some kind of um, like villains in the James Bond movies that are in their offices, are scheming and plotting to destroy democracy. And, and uh, that might be true in some sense. But there are different angles that we could see, look at the problem. It's from a more structural perspective. So not this agent-driven, but from this looking at populists as a, some kind of sign of inefficiencies of liberal democracies. And the populism is not a threat. It's only a, some kind of sign, an indicator of some kind of uh, tensions inside the liberal democracy itself. And this second approach, I think it's more interesting that we could see populism in some kind of chronological order. I'm from Poland, so if we look at the effects of this populist movement in Poland, we could see that the first effect is this kind of what we could call the um, revival of politics. More and more people are engaged in some kind of political, in the public sphere discussions, uh, in politics, the number of people that go to the, in vote is increasing. And there are very high levels, like 60-70% of voters now vote in Poland. And there is a great mobilization against the populist government. So that would be a very positive, I think, effect of the populists in power. The second thing that the also, not only this engagement in politics in general, but also the quality of the public discussion. I'm a legal theoretician, but, and I'm interested in constitutionalism. So till now, till the, this populist government, we didn't have the real constitutional discussion in Poland. We had only scholars who were constitutionalists formally, but I would say that they were rather uh, dogmatics of constitution. So they were the representative something that we could call this legal constitutionalism. So treating constitution as a, this kind of formal law and seeing, interpreting constitution as this kind of technicality. So there is, there is, um, it was based on the assumption that there exists a certain expert knowledge that the lawyer has. And by using this kind of technical knowledge, you could interpret a constitution merely as some kind of external object. And citizens were excluded from this process. It was done only in, by the experts. But now, because of the crisis, constitution became more debatable by the citizens themselves. And lawyers are becoming more and more engaged in the discussion with the citizens, different political groups, about the constitution. So the constitution becomes something more connected with our everyday political experience. And that is the opening space for this kind of more political constitutionalism, that the constitution is more and more debatable and more and more used. And I can see that uh, in the lower courts. The number of arguments from the constitution in the lower courts, regional courts of Poland, is increasing. The judges, this um, more and more used constitution in their daily sentences. So that would be again a certain good aspect. So we have this more engagement in the political life and also this kind of revival of constitutionalism as an effect of populist in power. There is a political conflict in Poland and the judges are, and lawyers in general are mobilizing against the abuses of the constitution. So that is um, a fact, simply. But this kind of engagement and this mobilization, I think it uh, has a very positive edge to it. That, um, that the lawyers are organizing themselves and are beginning to engage in some kind of social dialogue with the different groups of citizens uh, because of the, what the government is doing. So I think it's, it's something very positive. And, but constitution is something that uh, I think it's not a formal 
formal this kind of borders for a political action. It's rather something that you have to fight for. So this, this mobilization, it's there, to have a real constitutionalism and real constitution, there is no other way. You have to fight for it as a citizen. You have to engage with it. You have to know that this is your constitution and you have to defend it. And without this engagement, there will be no constitution. So I think the fight is still on and the citizens are beginning to, um, to more effectively use the constitution. And we will see. I don't know how it will end. How to end.